Thank you for joining me today. We are here to discuss how we can build our future together. At the heart of this topic lies the biggest challenge we will face in the coming decades, which is how our politics will evolve. Singapore has enjoyed more than 50 years of constructive politics. This has helped keep us cohesive and united, grow our economy and build our nation. But how do we remain united despite our diversities? One, though we are many. As in previous leadership transitions, three sets of questions are uppermost in people's minds about me and my team. One, who are we? What do we believe in and care deeply about? Two, where do we want to lead Singapore and Singaporeans to? How will we continue to improve your lives? And three, how will we lead? How will we work with you? These are important questions. As President Halima Yaakob said at the opening of Parliament last year, the right to leadership cannot be inherited. Each generation of leaders has to earn the right to lead by itself, for itself. I know, and my colleagues know, that we have to earn your trust. I mean to do so by working with you, for you, for Singapore. These words express our deep-seated beliefs, the reasons why we decided to enter politics. I would like to share with you my thoughts on how we can build our future together. We have worked hard since 1965 to become one people. We were not one when we became independent. The years before independence were marked by violence and upheaval. During the race riots of 1964, neighbours who had known each other for years, if not decades, suddenly became suspicious of each other solely because of the colour of their skin. After separation, Mr Lee Kuan Yew and his team knew that they had to mobilise Singaporeans if the country was to survive. They spoke to Singaporeans frankly, explaining the challenges we faced, the choices we had, and why we had to take certain tough measures. None of the things we now take for granted, tripartism, national service, multiracialism, religious harmony, bilingualism, came easily or naturally. Mr. Lee and his team squared with the people, never hid the bitter truths and carried the ground. They did not earn the trust of people with empty promises. They earned their trust the hard way by trusting them with the hard truths and leading from the front. This was how the Pioneer Generation and Merdeka Generations came to support the tough, long-term policies their leaders took. Our founding fathers were revolutionaries who lived in turbulent times. Singaporeans came to trust them because they saw them stand up to powerful adversaries, communists, communalists. They never flinched in a tough neighbourhood. Just as soldiers sharing the same trenches in battle come to trust and rely upon each other without reservation, the overwhelming majority of Singaporeans came to give their wholehearted support to Mr. Lee and his team. This kind of relationship between leaders and the people cannot be replicated unless we go through again the same kind of life and death struggles. As we developed, 
how Singaporeans related to the government changed. We came to identify ourselves as Singaporeans, not just Chinese, Malay or Indian, or by religion or language. Slowly but surely, we traversed the journey from Singapore to Singaporean, to quote the words of the bicentennial experience. Singapore became more than a place. It became a home, our home. And the Singaporeans came to feel a greater sense of ownership of their country. They naturally want to have a stronger say in how they were governed. Not just once every four or five years when they cast their ballots, but also in between as policies were developed and implemented. The bonds of trust between the founding generation of leaders and Singaporeans were forged in better. But as our society matured, successive generations of leaders had to win the hearts and minds of Singaporeans in their own way, in accordance with the tenor of the times. Mr. Goh Chok Tong and his team responded to the needs of a changing electorate by creating a kinder, gentler society. The government became more consultative. Mr. Goh created a feedback unit even before he became Prime Minister in 1990. The nominated Member of Parliament scheme was introduced so that more views could be heard in Parliament. And various national engagement efforts were launched. Among them, the Next Lab, Singapore 21, and Remaking Singapore, to involve more Singaporeans in decision making. When Mr. Lee Hsien Long became PM, he took this further with a more inclusive style of governance. He revamped the feedback unit to become rich. His focus shifted from asking for feedback on government policies to getting Singaporeans to share their views on issues that mattered to them. PM Lee listened to what people were concerned about, and he strengthened and extended our social safety nets, including CPF Life, MediShield Life, CareShield Life, and the ComCare Fund. PM Lee envisioned a new way forward in 2013 to create a more just, an equal society. But even as the style of governance changed, a few constants ran through successive generations of leaders. First, winning and retaining the trust of Singaporeans remained the essence of government. And second, explaining the trade-offs and challenges we face and telling people the truth remained the essence of political leadership even on difficult matters like population, tax, or HDB leases. I believe that trust between the people and the government is absolutely essential. And the best way to win your trust is to first trust you with the truth, no matter how hard or unpopular. Building on our inheritance, how the 4G leadership evolved a style of leadership in keeping with our times, one that would enable us to forge a renewed bond of trust with a new generation of Singaporeans. Our approach to leadership must continue to stress constructive politics and unity. We are, now more, di we are more diverse now than we were in 1965. For one, we have become more diverse in terms of our needs. The fastest growing segment of our population are seniors. Their needs are very different from that of the young. While the vast majority of our families have seen their lives improve by leaps and bounds, some segments of our society may not have made the same progress and will need some other forms of support. To support these differing needs, 
we have to consider new policy trade-offs, including how best to allocate our resources. Otherwise, society can fracture along the lines of class or backgrounds, as has happened in other advanced economies. Our views have also become more diverse, as the range of life experiences of Singaporeans have become more varied. As a result, we see sharper debates on many issues, from LGBT rights to freedom of speech, from the welfare of foreign workers to nature conservation. A contestation of views and ideas is good for Singapore, but it can also divide us. Singaporeans can end up living in self-enclosed silos on social media, perpetuating their own versions of reality in narrow echo chambers. Singaporeans are also exposed to and can be influenced by extremist and exclusivist ideologies from other parts of the world, which can be especially damaging in our context. We must not allow our differences to divide us. We've seen how social stratification and ideological differences have splintered the social compact in many countries. Instead, we must retain and harness our diversity as a strength. But our increasing diversity means you'll become increasingly harder to maintain our common space. We have to nurture that deliberately, something that the government cannot do on its own. Singaporeans will have to be open to views that are diametrically opposed to theirs. We must build a culture of respect and tolerance and some measure of patience as well. For often, we simply have to agree to disagree and allow time for a consensus to evolve on difficult and controversial issues. It is critical that we stay united as we will have to navigate some serious challenges ahead. The global order is undergoing transition as the United States and China adjust to each other and hopefully find a new equilibrium. Meanwhile, technological advancements are gathering pace, dramatically changing the way we live, work and interact with one another. And we will need to confront longer-term existential threats like climate change and serious pandemics. But at the same time, there are many exciting opportunities ahead. We are an oasis of stability in a turbulent world. We are at the heart of an economically vibrant, growing Asia and on the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution. Our people are better educated, technologically savvy, and have the cultural underpinnings to connect with all parts of the world. We have some of the best systems and infrastructure in the world and are continuing to invest in a big way to transform our city. Navigating these challenges and grasping these opportunities will not be straightforward. We will need the wits and will of all Singaporeans to explore these issues, experiment with possible solutions, and act together if we are to successfully overcome these challenges and seize the opportunities that are out there. This brings me to the heart of today's discussion. In the next phase of nation building, the 4G leadership will strive to harness our diverse strengths and partner Singaporeans to take Singapore forward. 
Allow me to share with you my own experience early on in my public service career. My first appointment was in the police in the 1980s. At a time when the police was exploring more, a more effective model of policing. Several of us were sent to study the Japanese Koban system, where police posts were placed close to communities. We saw that the police officer in Japan is not a distant representative of the law, just to ensure law and order for the community. Instead, he is part of the community, working with the community to maintain law and order. We learned from the Japanese and applied the same principles in Singapore. We started community policing, the most visible part being the neighborhood police posts. The police built trust with residents, and residents in turn helped the police keep everyone in the community safe. The Chinese idiom, so wang xiang chu, looking out and helping one another, describes this approach well. Later on, I entered politics. Like all my 4G colleagues who entered politics, most of us in 2011, some earlier, some later, I walked the ground and engaged Singaporeans at various levels. I myself led our Singapore Conversation, or OSC, from 2012 to 2013. We heard the views of Singaporeans from all walks of life, both their concerns about bread and butter issues and their hopes and aspirations. It was a humbling yet gratifying experience. I was not sure when we started where these open-ended conversations would lead to. Many Singaporeans were also skeptical at first. They were not sure if their opinions would be taken seriously. But not only were they heard, we were able to translate their inputs into significant policy changes. For example, many Singaporeans said they wanted more inclusive healthcare package coverage. The Pioneer Generation package was a direct outcome of this process. The transformation of MediShield into MediShield Life was another. Something else came out of the OSC process. It's especially close to my heart. The upcoming changes to the PSLE scoring system. Many OSC participants felt that our education system had become too high stakes at too young an age. So the PSLE system was changed. I will see the impact soon. Above all, I was heartened by the spirit and passion of Singaporeans. There was a diversity of views, some starkly opposed. But despite the differences, we were able to have open and constructive conversations. Everyone fought on the same side and wanted Team Singapore to win. When Chun Seng and Grace led the SG Future series of engagements in 2015, they too were encouraged by Singaporeans wanting to take charge of their future and make their own contribution to society. These experiences have crystallized our goals as a leadership team. They have strengthened my own belief that working for you, government needs to work better with you. We need to shift from a government that focuses on primarily working for you to a government that works with you, working with you, for you. We'll work with Singaporeans to build Singapore together. In some areas like national service, national security and foreign policy, the government will continue to lead decisively with clear-eyed realism. But in many other areas, there is plenty of room for debate and, delib and deliberate and established partnerships with Singaporeans. When I was at MOE, the phrase I heard most often is, it takes a village to raise a child. 
Indeed, one reason why our children do so well is that it is a whole of society effort involving parents, teachers, and the children themselves. Our educators believe deeply that every parent, a supportive partner, every teacher, a caring educator, and every school, a good school, and all are essential to develop every student to become an engaged learner for life. So really, in Singapore, it doesn't take only a village to raise a child. It takes the whole of Singapore. In the same way, raising Singapore to even greater heights must involve all Singaporeans. During OSC, many of you told us that you wanted to move from talking to walking the talk. You wanted to think together, work together, and build Singapore together in partnership with the government. We can realize this aspiration. This will strengthen the bonds of trust, not only between the governments and the people, but also among different individuals and community groups. We'll do this in two ways. First, the government will partner Singaporeans in new ways to design and implement policies together. Second, beyond partnering you in specific areas, we'll work with you to create a shared future, one where every Singaporean will have a part to play. First, the government will partner Singaporeans in new ways. We want to draw on the diversity of passions and expertise among Singaporeans to improve policies and programs to better, need, better meet our needs. And important, as importantly, we want to work with you to implement these policies so that we can deliver solutions on the ground. To do this, we'll find new ways to tap on your ideas and perspectives, as we already have. Some of you, like Dr. Kalpana Baskaran, participated in MOH's Citizens Jury for War on Diabetes and gave many valuable recommendations. Indrani and the Uplift Task Force are working with community support groups to help disadvantaged children overcome the challenges they face. And Josephine will soon launch a Citizens Panel to look at ways to improve work-life harmony, an issue close to the hearts of many Singaporeans. We'll work hand-in-hand -hand with more of you to design and implement solutions across a wider range of issues and policy areas. This includes environmental sustainability, an issue that many Singaporeans, especially our young, are passionate about because they will be inheriting the consequences of our actions today. Masagos and his team in Muir are engaging citizens, civil society and businesses to come up with concrete action in this area. In housing, Lawrence and his MND team will work more closely with residents to shape their living environment and build a stronger sense of community. For young Singaporeans, Grace and MCCY are working with our youth to create a vision of Singapore 2025 through the Youth Action Plan. And in social mobility, Desmond and Ikang will be leading their respective ministries to work with community groups to support the disadvantaged and give them a good start in life. I've also been working with closely with Chun Singh, Iswaran, Josephine, Ikang, Chi Ming, as well as our business leaders, trade associations and chambers and unions to build our future economy, to create good jobs for our people and help our businesses succeed. We're also reaching out to many Singaporeans with the help of thousands of volunteers. And we can do more. For example, 
through the community network for seniors led by Kim Yong, to build a community of care and support for our seniors. Through SG Secure, led by Shamugam, to better galvanize the community and make Singapore more resilient. And through our Smart Nation ambassadors led by Vivian, to help every Singaporean use digital technology in a human-centered way. We'll encourage and support individuals and groups to come together for the common good. We've already seen the pace of such people-to-people -people partnerships picking up over the years. Like-minded people are coming together to contribute to a common good. The Friends of Ubi Network is one example. Residents, youth, educators, researchers, volunteers, and members from the heritage, nature, and other communities came together to brainstorm and develop new initiatives for the island. They even de developed a code of conduct for environmentally and socially responsible behavior on Pulau Ubin, known as the Ubin Way. We're also seeing organizations working together to make a difference. The Singapore Youth Impact Collective is a good example where six companies, foundations, and VWOs came together to find ways to help disadvantaged youth across different stages of life. They realized early on that multiple stakeholders are needed to help these youth, and working together allows them to build on each other's strengths. The government is also working with VWOs to match aspiring volunteers and social causes through the SG Cares app. The app makes it easier for Singaporeans to find volunteering opportunities that are near them or interest them. The app also contains many stories that have inspired Singaporeans to take up volunteerism. I welcome all groups and individuals to join these efforts. We may have different views, but so long as you have the good of Singapore at heart, we can work together. For example, you may think that the government is not doing enough to help families in rental flats to become homeowners. Or you may think that current ideas to improve the performance of children from low-income families are not sufficient. I encourage you to work with us to solve these problems, as many volunteers and non-governmental groups are already doing. One of our founding fathers, Mr. S. Rajaratnam, used to speak of a democracy of deeds and not just of words. Partnership is more than just contributing feedback, suggestions, or ideas. It is about following through on ideas and suggestions and making things happen. Our future Singapore, the Singapore we are building together, must be an expanded democracy of deeds, with citizens taking action to make a difference. Which brings me to my second point. We will work with you to create a shared future one where every Singaporean will have a part to play. We all know many Singaporeans who have pursued their passions and given back to society. For example, Ms. Pamela Chung, who founded Better, Better Barista, a coffee academy that helps marginalized women and youth at risk become certified baristas. Or Mr. Richard Kupusami, President of the Disabled People's Association, who has been working with BCA to ensure our built environment is accessible to wheelchair users. Or Ms. Miza Rahman, who founded Participate in Design, a non-profit to help neighborhoods and public institutions design community-owned spaces. This is how this little red dot remains a successful country. Generations of Singaporeans of all races, religions, ages, and genders 
chipping in to improve the lives of their fellow citizens. Many more Singaporeans today want to play a bigger part in nation building, not just contributing to specific areas, but also contributing to shaping our shared future. Younger Singaporeans in particular have been widely exposed to the world and as a result, are passionate about shaping the society that they live in. Older Singaporeans too, having benefited from the fruits of our progress, want to contribute to the success of our future generations. Many Singaporeans overseas are also stepping forward to give their views and to contribute. So too, friends of Singapore, who have lived here for long or have visited us often and want to see us succeed. As we enter the next phase of nation building, I encourage more Singaporeans to come forward to envision our future, to propose ideas for shaping our future. To do so effectively, we also need to enlarge and safeguard our common space and build trust among communities. This can happen only if we keep an open mind. Look at the issues, not just through our own lens, but through the perspectives of others. Recognize that other viewpoints, even if they are not in line with our own, may be just as valid. And that not all our ideas can be taken on board, wholesale, or even accepted. The government must, be, must also be prepared, if necessary, to step in if particular groups pursue their agenda in ways that divide society or impede the good work of other groups. Otherwise, we run the risk of alienating other Singaporeans, especially those who are unable to organize and speak up for themselves. In the coming months, the 4G leaders we'll be engaging our people on how we can build this future Singapore. For a start, we'll touch on four themes. First, how do we remain a resilient nation in a face of major developments around the world, from geopolitical shifts to climate change? Second, how can we remain a city of possibilities by transforming our economy, harnessing technology, and building our future city and home, where sports, arts, culture, and heritage can flourish. Third, how can we build a society with more opportunities for all? How can we provide strong foundation for all our children and create multiple pathways and careers? so all our people are able to fulfill their potential and aspirations. Fourth, how can we build on a strong foundation of a multiracial, multireligious, and multicultural society to build an even more caring, gracious, kind, and cohesive community and strengthen our identity as one people? For each of these themes, my team and I will share more with you what we want to achieve for our country and people. We will set out not just our vision for the future, but where we want to go, but also how we can get there. We will be frank about the challenges we face, the trade-offs we have to make, the hard truths confronting us. We will listen to your views and explore together what the government can do, what each of you can do, and how we can create partnerships to take good ideas forward. In the process, I hope you will know better who we are, what we believe in, and as we jointly figure out where we want to go, I hope we will get to know each other better. This is how my team and I will take Singapore forward by charting our future together, leveling with you, expanding the common space, 
and journeying towards a better future. This is how we will expand our democracy of deeds. This is how we will build a society where every Singaporean has a strong sense of belonging and a part to play in building our shared future together. What I've spoken of today will be the work of a generation. We must not expect partnerships to proliferate overnight in every policy domain. It will be a learning process for all of us. Government agencies will have to learn to better engage and rally different groups and accept good ideas wherever they may come from while continuing to exercise leadership, act in the long-term interest of our country and not abdicate their responsibilities. At the same time, community groups and individuals will have to learn to better engage with each other and with the public sector, always keeping the interests of Singapore and your fellow Singaporeans at heart. On some issues, even if we share the same aim, we may have different views on how the policies are to be designed and implemented. For example, there is a range of views on how to help lower income groups. My team and I will listen carefully to all views and decide on the best trade-offs that will serve all Singaporeans well. And we will welcome Singaporeans to contribute to implementing these policies to realize our shared future. This is what I mean by a democracy of deeds, contributing not just ideas, but also efforts. I'm confident that new and exciting ideas and many constructive actions will surface. As long as we persist, learn from each other, we can forge a new way forward, step by step. So let us take the next step today. Join us in walking this journey. My team and I are committed to working with you, for you. Your support, your ideas, your energies, your partnerships will be our strength. And with this strength, we will build Singapore together. I'll now say a few words in Malay and Mandarin. Pengalaman turun padang dan berunding dengan rakyat membantu kami bentuk mal malamat sebagai pasukan kepimpinan 4G. Di samping bekerja untuk anda, pemerintah perlu bekerja dengan lebih baik lagi bersama anda. Kami perlu berali daripada pemerintah yang tumpukan perhatian terhadap bekerja untuk anda kepada pemerintah yang bekerja bersama-sama anda. Bekerja bersama anda untuk anda. Kami akan lakukan peralihan ini melalui beberapa cara. Pertama, pemerintah akan mencari cara-cara baru untuk berganding bahu dengan rakyat Singapura supaya dapat sama-sama melaka dan melaksanakan dasar-dasar. Kedua, kita akan bersama-sama membina sebuah masa depan di mana setiap rakyat Singapura ada peranan yang boleh dimainkan. Ayu, setai kami, talai kembara, kita bersama ini. Saya dan pasukan saya, biotizam untuk bekerja bersama anda untuk anda. Sokongan anda, idea anda, tenaga anda dan perkongsian anda adalah sumber kekuatan kami. Dengan kekuatan ini, ayu kita bina Singapura bersama-sama. 
。我们接下来所面临的最大挑战，是如何发展我国的政治文化。精诚团结、具建设性的政治文化，是我国社会稳健发展的基础。新加坡应该如何继续保持团结一致，向前迈进？第四代领导团队自踏入政坛后，就不断与各界人士交流，倾听民意，广纳，倾听民生，广纳民意。我们意识到，很多国人愿意挺身效力。为新加坡做出更多、更大的贡献。我他们想积极参与国家的建设，付出实际行动，把理想变成现实。这让我和我的团队感到很欣慰。所以，接下来政府不止。着重以为国人建设新加坡，而会同国人建设更美好的家园，群策群力，共创未来。第四代领导团队将会结合大家的力量，与国人紧密合作，带领新加坡前进。第一。我们将提供新的机会和方式，促进政府和国人的合作，让国人参与制定政策，以以落实相关措施。大家都有不同的优势和才干，通过集思广益，我相信我们可以找出更有效的解决方案，更好的应付挑战。第二，除了在特定的领域和大家进行合作，我们也会和大家一起创造共同的未来。在未来的新加坡，每一位国人将可以参与国家的建设，为国效力。在这个过程中，我们会扩大。共同空间，求同存异，这将是我们这一代人的事事业。我们也明白，这并非不是一朝一夕就可以完成的。我们要努力不懈，共同打拼。新加坡要是一个以行动彰显民主的社会。接下来，我们会再接再厉，通过一系列的实际行动，在不同的领域里推展更多有利于国家发展的计划，让国人受惠。政府各群体与国人必须互相学习，同心同力，携手同行。你你们的支持、建议和参与。是我们前进的动力。让我们继续肩并肩，以坚韧不拔的精神，不断创新，迈向迈向更美好的未来。谢谢大家。